Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to iTouch App Reviewers. In this video, I've got two things to talk about with you guys, iOS 13 and WWDC. So let's first talk about WWDC and what it's going to encompass. WWDC is going to set the stage for this year's software and also give us glimpses into the hardware for this year that Apple is going to release. Now it appears that Apple is already going ahead and preparing for WWDC. As you guys can see right here, Apple has wiped the iTunes pages on Facebook and Instagram and begins moving away from iTunes links. So I'm sure all of you guys have used iTunes at least once in your life. Um, maybe you didn't like the experience. Personally, I never really liked iTunes that much. I know in the old days, it's been up for 18 years. So in the old days, like maybe 15 years ago or so, I remember trying to use it and it was definitely not a good program at all. Uh, very confusing. It's gotten better, but it's also very bloated and it's got too much going on. So what we think Apple's going to do is basically consolidate iTunes, or I should say remove iTunes and split it up into different apps, like a music app, TV app, and a podcast app or something like that. So you guys can see zero posts here, they cleared out their Facebook page, and a bunch of links were actually redirecting from iTunes.Apple.com to music.Apple.com. So that's going to kind of be a good indication that they are getting rid of iTunes, uh, which is kind of crazy because like just removing iTunes completely, something that might shock a lot of people because I mean, everyone's heard of the name iTunes. They've, they've used the program or heard of it. It just disappearing finally is going to kind of be a shock for some people. So you guys can see right here, Apple will instead use category specific links such as apps.apple.com, podcast.apple.com, tv.apple.com, movies.apple.com, and books.apple.com instead of just itunes.apple.com. And that makes sense. You know, they're kind of just making things more specific and kind of getting rid of iTunes now. Are they going to completely kill the iTunes app? We don't know for sure, but it really does seem like it. Um, they're just going to get rid of it and then move on to the other apps and stuff. So that's all for that. Now let's talk about WWDC with iOS 13, macOS, watchOS, and tvOS. So here's what we're expecting. Uh, this is compiled from Mac rumors. Now there are other things that might come as well. Uh, again, this is just rumors and stuff. iOS 13 is either going to be really, really cool or it's going to disappoint. And I think there's not much in between here because we have high expectations. If you guys remember back when we were on iOS 11, we said iOS 12 was supposed to have big changes. And then we heard that Apple cut the cord on that and decided to put just mainly bug fixes in iOS 12, which was great. But we heard that iOS 13 would have all the big changes. Well, here's the, here's the time for Apple to do that. We're really expecting iOS 13 to have some major changes. Uh, I'm hoping it does but from the leaks we've seen, it doesn't seem like that's gonna happen. So it's either gonna be disappointing or it's gonna be cool. That's what I mean by that. So iOS 13, we're gonna have dark mode, new volume HUD, uh, because this one is so freaking annoying. Uh, honestly, this one's even a little obtrusive. They could make it smaller. There's jailbreak tweaks that make it even cleaner than that, but we'll see what they do. A sleep mode, this will toggle on, do not disturb, darken the lock screen so it's not so bright if you pick up the phone and mute all incoming notifications. This would actually be really cool, especially if you could set it for like, I don't know, one or two hours, just so you can make sure you get to sleep fully. And once you're asleep, I mean, I don't wake up from notifications usually, at least just for a little bit. Cause you know, sometimes you set your phone down next to your bed and then someone texts you or something like three minutes later and you wake up and it's just pain in the ass. So this would be cool if you could set timers. Now iPad is actually going to be getting a lot of updates for iOS 13, supposedly. A new home screen layout is expected, but few details have been provided. However, we have heard this from the leakers on Twitter. So they have mentioned that uh, iOS 13 is going to have some major home screen layout design changes for the iPad. Of course, someone has to start mowing their grass right as I'm filming. Apple is introducing improved multitasking. iPad apps will support multiple windows through a tab view, and there may be stackable cards within apps that can be rearranged. It's kind of hard to envision that exactly, but if Apple can pull off improved multitasking for iPad apps, that'd be really nice because the iPad is capable of so much more and iOS is just not tapping into that. New gesture for undoing text input on iPad and possibly mouse support. Now that would be a huge breakthrough feature if they actually do that. It'll probably be some very limited version if they do it, but hey, if they go whole hog, I'm all for it. An updated Find My iPhone app. So this is supposedly what it's going to look like. Uh, it's going to incorporate Find My Friends, so it's going to be all in one. Uh, makes sense. A lot of people did not like this icon. I actually do. I think it looks pretty clean. They think it'll just be called Find My, which is also fine. I mean, who really cares what it's called? You're not going to look at the name that much. You just stick it in a folder and forget about it. Now, Messages. Messages is said to be gaining a new WhatsApp style feature that will let users add their own profile picture and display name and then choose who sees that info. Apple is also adding a dedicated menu for Animoji and Memoji stickers. That sounds super, super awesome. I really hope they do that. I would love to be able to set a username on my iMessages 
uh, for anyone that looks at them and has me as a contact there. I think setting a profile pic is also really cool. Great idea. No one's using an emoji or an emoji, so adding a dedicated menu would be probably helpful for that. Now in the mail app, Apple may be planning to add new features that will organize messages into searchable categories like marketing, purchases, travel, not important, and more. Plus there will be a read later queue, an option to mute incoming email notifications for specific email threads, and a tool for blocking people you don't wanna to talk to. All of this, honestly, <laughs> it sounds like stuff that should have been in the mail app originally, but is not. So very, very nice to have those added as well. Finders app, pretty self-explanatory. You guys can see it here. Way, way different, updated, a lot nicer than it does currently. Right now it's very, very basic. Uh, books app, you might get rewarded for reading books. No one really cares about books. Health, supposedly going to have a hearing health section that measures how loud you play music on your headphones. I don't know if I really want to hear about that, but they're supposedly going to add it. A better view of daily activity may also be included and Apple may include better tools for tracking menstrual cycles. Mac OS 10.15. So we don't really know what it's going to be called, but my guess is, is that it's going to be called Mammoth. Here are some of the things that are going to be coming possibly with it. Cross-platform apps. With this, Apple aims to let developers design a single app that works on either a touchscreen or a mouse and trackpad based on whether it's running iOS or Mac OS. Essentially, what we're looking at here is universal apps, but not just for iPad and iPhone, but also including Mac. New apps coming to the Mac. We got music, podcasts, and books. So like I said at the beginning, iTunes is probably going away. They'll split these up. Makes sense. So goodbye to iTunes and hello to three more apps. Uh, iPad as an external display is probably coming. 32-bit uh, app support is ending, so everything will be 64-bit, which I actually am totally cool with. I think 64-bit, obviously they run much better. We don't need 32-bit anymore, so let's move everything to 64. New Find My App, so obviously this will be very similar to the one on the iPhone. Apple Watch Authentication for your Mac. And then Watch OS 6, not a whole lot here on that one. TVOS, again, not a whole lot. So those are the big updates that are coming for the iPhone and Mac. I know this video was pretty long, but hopefully it encompassed everything that we are expecting tomorrow. Um, of course, tomorrow I will probably be making a video. I will not be getting iOS 13 tomorrow because I'm waiting for the public beta. I'm not hopping on the developer beta. It's usually really buggy and not stable enough for me at least because I put this on my daily driver. Now for any of you guys that are thinking about getting iOS 13 public beta one, I advise against it unless you are okay with major, major bugs. Like sometimes they break major things like Bluetooth connectivity, phone calls. Like in the past, there have been some really, really big bugs with the first betas. For me, that's cool. I know the risks. I will probably be making videos if there are huge bugs like that, uh, calling Apple out and hopefully, you know, that helps them get fixed quicker. If you're not cool with that stuff, I highly, highly advise against getting the first couple betas. The first ones are very unstable usually. So with that disclaimer out the way, I will be getting iOS 13 public beta one uh, once it releases, probably in a week or week and a half. I will definitely be reporting on what we see tomorrow. That's all I got for this video, guys. If you liked it, hit with a big thumbs up and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.